we'll go over generally um, pretty much all the pieces of it. Some of it is um, pretty intense when you get into it, and I'll kind of mention those. And then if you want some further training or uh, information about those features, we can go through those at some other time. Uh, those features, uh, to be honest with you, we, we use very, very little of them. Um, just when there's any uh, really, really uh, intense customizations that have to be had done for certain uh, things out there. And I'll just kind of cover those as we go through. Um, first thing I, I like to do is I always like to start at the very top of the custom office. And that is um, custom office, of course, is controlled by security. And one of the things that most people don't do or aren't aware of is that under this little option called Module Options, Custom Office, Allow Customization of Forms via Hotkey. If that is checked, that gives you the ability to do a Control F9. And what the Control F9 does is basically it launches you in the, in the customizer so that you can modify the screens. And unfortunately, when that's not turned off, a lot of times the uh, users out there who are, how do I say, excellent keyboard users um, may accidentally hit that and bring it up. And if you do that, it basically uh, will create a, a customized screen for them. And sometimes it can be troublesome in trying to fix any issues that may uh, you may have out there. So I always suggest that you want to check that for all your users, um, except for maybe your uh, the person that will be doing any customizations out there. And what that does is it actually gives you the ability to go into the screen, and I'll show you this um, when we go through the steps here, is that it allows you to do this Control F9, and then we'll bring that into the Customize Editor. Um, the other setup that we have out there that we'll go through is when we get down here to Custom Office, these are the different things that you can do out there uh, within it. Uh, different reports and everything. So you want to make sure that nobody has that except for somebody that is going to be able to um, modify the, the forms or add um, UDF fields or UDTs or anything like that. <clears throat> what I did is I went ahead and created a pre-created pre a UDT table and we'll, we'll be covering that as we go through the process too. And when you use a UDT table, um, I'll get into detail for it, it adds it to the security. So if I were to go run, and I had set this up so that uh, we can do some, I can show you some data entry here through this uh, process, is that you cannot do anything to that table unless you have it checked there. It gives you permission to um, modify that table. And then, and what UDTs are used for is they're good as a, as a is a loading point, a table that can be used with the UDF so you don't have to um, basically select a bunch of different values out there. They're hard values that are out there that you can just use in a drop down or whatever you want to do and we'll kind of reference those as we go through. So it's always a good thing to start at the very top which is the role maintenance and give the correct permissions and everything out there. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with uh, the customized selection um, this is where you're going to go through, <clears throat> when, it, when it pulls up, you notice I have a lot out there because my virtual machine here has all the panels and everything. So we're just going to look at one and basically what they do, um, it shows you, it breaks it down to all the different screen forms that you have out there that you want to modify uh, with the customizer. So in our case, we're basically going to do uh, uh, just some simple things through here. Uh, so we're going to do customer maintenance. And these are all the forms or screens out there that they have that you can basically modify. Um, what I generally do, because it's, um, it's a little bit easier than going through and trying to figure out which one is which, what you're trying to do, is I will go through the program if I'm doing this. Go to accounts receivable, and we're going to use customer maintenance for an example. Um, 
I'll find the screen that I want to modify and then use that control F9 to get into it. So in this case, what we're going to do is I'm just going to pull up this first customer, go to the additional tab because I'm going to add a field out here. Then we're going to tie it to UDT and go through the whole process. So at this point, this is basically what you, you're going to see when you're running the program. Now I'm going to add this UDF and then maybe I'll move a couple fields around and explain how that works here on this. So it's a lot easier if you use the Control F9. Oh, sorry about that. I close out of that. So it basically won't let you do it if you got it open. Um, to open up that panel. Now, the first thing we're doing here, we do not have a customized panel out there. So down in the bottom screen, it's grayed out. Up here, we're going to create a new customized panel. Now, I can create it for myself, or I can create it for specific users if I had multiple users added out there, or different companies, individual companies. Uh, generally, what I use, usually do when I set them up, they're pretty much the same for everybody. So if you have multiple companies you're using out there, you might want to see the same thing. But I just check all and all. Once we modify this, and if we go back into it later, you'll see it will add an entry at the bottom. Um, one of the things you want to be aware of is that when you're adding these customized uh, screens for somebody, um, the more you have out there, um, if you ever want to make changes to it, you have to make changes to everyone. So if you just have one that you're using for everybody in the world, that's good. But if you have ones that you're going to use for uh, certain individuals that do certain functions, um, we could set them up under basically the, uh, uh, the groups. But we'll just go through adding this for everybody out there right now. So at this point, what I'm going to do, this is going to pull up the customizer here. And you have a number of buttons here that we can go through. Um, and I'll try to explain what those are and what they can do out there. But if you notice, the screen itself um, is different than what you're seeing here because it's a different size. You're working within a specific panel in here. So if I go back out to here, this is what you're going in. And that um, um, additional tab that I was in is just within this um, um, what they call tab here with the information. So uh, one of the things that I can do is um, you have a lot of fixed buttons that are down on the bottom or up on the top. You don't really want to move those around. Sometimes you have to adjust the size of the screen. If you have to adjust the size of the screen, some of these buttons are uh, used to do that. And I'll kind of go through the buttons first to kind of give you an idea. Um, this first button up here is at, add an external link. Sometimes we use that to do certain things and do some coding behind it uh, if you have customizations or not out there. Um, they're not used a whole lot, but I probably would say we use them 5% of the time. Uh, this is for text. If you just want to add a description or something on one of these uh, panels, uh, this is where you add a field. You can add a field, either a UDF, which is a custom defined field, which we'll go through out there, or a field from one of the associated data, data tables out there. And I'll kind of show, walk you through that. Uh, add a frame. We can add a new frame in here for a new tab if we wanted to. Um, we can group items. This undo button will show up once you've done an action out there. And if you don't like that action, you can undo it, or you can undo a number of them. And all these different tools that are out there, this is the, pan this is the header, what they call the header. Basically, um, you can add colors to it if you wanted to uh, by selecting uh, this. And it kind of shows you what it is. Um, size and position. And basically, if you need to enlarge the screen, so if you put a tab in out there and you want to make it a little bigger so you get all the descriptions and everything in there, you can do that. Um, so that's what that button is used for. Uh, tab definitions are basically on the screen. In other words, if you hit your tab key, where are you going to go? So as you're adding fields out there, they don't always add them at the bottom when you're tabbing. It, they add them based on the positioning on the screens that you're doing or where you're moving things around to. 
So you basically have to use that tab screen to move the tabs around. Um, you know, you can insert them, you can append them, you can move them up and down, you can remove them, you can, you know, add different ones out there. Um, so that's what you would do with that one. Um, the panel map just shows you what's on that, the fields that are out there and where they're all at, the different panels and everything. Generally, you don't use that a lot. I, I certainly don't myself. Um, you can preview a panel, which basically just shows you what it would look like if you opened it up in mass. And the one key here is whenever you see a little star in front of the name of the, pan the panel you're in or program you're in, that tells you you have a customized screen out there. So sometimes, like I said, when you have people who have the Control F9, they've gone out there and accidentally created one because it'll automatically create it. And basically what happens is you'll add some fields to somebody else's and theirs won't show up. And so um, you'll know that you have a customized panel out there just by what you're running by looking at it. So when you go into the forms, and I'll show you that as soon as we create one, you can see who has their own by their user initials. And then you can say, oh, is that did we customize it for them or did we customize it for everybody or what did we do out there? So we just close back and go back to here. This basically shows grid lines on the screen so you can, when you drop and dragging things, you can kind of figure out where they're at to keep them in line. I don't use them, I just kind of, uh, and I'll show you, I kind of use the, the settings out there to figure out where they're going to go on the screens. Um, oops, I accidentally closed that one get back into it. So you notice, good thing, you notice I created that panel out there. So once you get into it, it creates it. So I just click on it to edit that one, what I want to do. Um, again, you just close that. It's always when you do an individual panel, it's going to take you back to the main panel here. Um, you know, you can copy a panel, you can save it, you can delete it. Um, help if you want to do it, you can print a pa panel listing. So that's the different keys out there. In here, generally these buttons are fixed or they have actions behind them. Any of them that are in here, you don't really want to um, delete or remove um, or hide them on the main panel here. Uh, same with the customer number, customer name. A lot of times if you're going to maintain this panel, what you're actually going to do here is, let's see, just make it a little bigger just so it's, it's got more height to it. Just as an example because I'll delete it after I'm done. What I'm going to do is I'm basically, if I were to, to do this to use it, what I'm going to do is pull this down and then basically make the panels bigger in here. Um, so locate everything down at the bottom again here and just pull them down. And then when I make the panels bigger, it's basically going to give me uh, um, oops. the ability to um, make the panels bigger so I can add more fields if I have to do that. That happens a lot in, in the customizations. I had a client where I just added about 200 inventory fields because they want no colors. They have all the different stuff they want to know about it um, just so they, they can be able to look at it. Sometimes you'll add a, a new panel to do that. So you pull that down and then you expand, you can expand the panel size. Same thing, um, this is what's really tough. Other people do it different ways. This is the folder definition. So you can define the heights on the folders also. These are the different uh, folders that you have out there or panels. So you can go to them. Um, so if we go back to the additional one, I just click on it. I can add a new one out there if I wanted to and we'll just add one. No, I don't want to save that. Uh, so I went to this one. I'm coming back. I come in here, and I just double click on the top, and I'm going to add a new one. I can call it whatever I want to, uh, just by changing this. So I'll add that real quick. Um, so it, it's added that panel out there. So now, after I've added the panel, then I can go into it, and I can go to that panel. Um, yes, at this point I will, so I can have my own fields out there. 
in what we're doing. So I can add my fields and go through this um, if we were going to do this. Or if, again, we're going to go to the additional panel because we're going to add a field out there to try to figure out how we're going to move these things around the, move these fields. Um, the fields themselves, um, you can move them around through any panel, but you cannot delete them from a panel. So if you highlight a field and you delete it, it will not be able to delete, be deleted. But I can go into the attributes by right-clicking on it, and I can say um, data validation options. I can hide this if I wanted to. I can remove it from being a tab stop. I can disable it. Whole things, the whole things like that, different things you can do to it. Um, you have the same thing with the text. Generally, when you add a field, the text will come in with it, and I'll kind of go through that. You can set up the, you can change the name of it if you want to. Some people do that. Do different things, different attributes. Options, again, you can move it around and everything. Usually when I add a field or, or have to position it, I'll use this. Or you can hide it if you want to and just leave it out there. So simply, if I just wanted to move, let's say I want to move these two things up a couple lines, what I can do um, is I can move this up here. And then if I wanted to, oh, i got to adjust it a little bit. I can push it up a little bit. Or if I hit the attributes, I can just go in here and say, OK, I want to I want to move it down a little bit or move it up a little bit. Then you can just do that. So I'll just move these two here. And the reason I'm doing that is because um, uh, I'm going to show you how to move them around um, when we get to that point. I'm going to add what, a UDF in here. Um, so if I were to add a UDF, if I get to this point, I need to click, click over here to add a field. Okay. And then what you do is you select it, make it whatever size you want to. Generally, um, one row is the default size for all these. You'll see, you'll see as we add them out there. Um, so I've added this UD, UDF-Z. Um, now, these are all different. Um, tables out there where different UDFs could be added or different fields could be added out there. Uh, these do not have any UDFs. Or if I wanted to, I could show all. And I could basically, um, basically, you know, if I wanted to, I could do something silly like put email address over here. So I can add any field to a screen, but I can't delete a field that's already been to a screen. So basically, if you wanted to redo a screen and say, I don't need this information in it, you basically just go in there and make it hidden. And then what I, ge I generally do in my process is, is to pull these fields that you're not going to use anymore, that you're going to hide out there. And for instance, we'll just go out there and we'll hide this one. Uh, we'll make it hidden. We won't make it a tab stop anymore. So it'll go away. It'll still be on the screen, but it won't be on the screen when we get to the final product. So if we go over here and do a panel preview, uh, right now it's going to show it out there um, because it's I should have taken it off. I'm not really sure why I didn't take it off, why it's not hidden. But we'll look at it when we get out there. But I, now I've added this email address out there, and I can move. And you see by default it's added whatever the description of that field is out there to it. Um, if you don't want a field out there, you can just um, delete it. And then you have to delete the corresponding um, description. So in this point, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add this UDF out there that I've created out there and kind of give you, um, I think I made it 25. We'll just add this one out here. And it's going to drop that one in there. OK? So when I click on here, that would save it. But one of the things I want to do is I want to look at my tab try to figure out where it is. So based on this, where do I want it to tab from? So after statement cycle, so I need to move it up so that when I tab through the screen, it's going to um, show 1415. Okay. 
So we have that one out there now. So I'm going to go ahead and save this, and then we'll just go out there and we'll look at the screen within the customization uh, if I go into this. Um, let's pull up the first record. Go over here to this, and it's added this, and you notice the one that I hid is now gone. So the hidden ones, usually what I do is I just find an area at the bottom, and I kind of leave, when I, when I build these screens, I kind of leave an area at the bottom, and if I'm going to take anything off of it, I just drag it down there and overlay, have them all overlaid instead of just living it in there, or you can just leave it there and overlay it. But anyway, so what I've done here is um, I've set up this UDF. Now, um, with these, with the, um, with the forms or the screen customizations here, um, uh, what I did with this field is kind of set it up to UDT. I don't have any values in there right now. And what, I'm using, what I'll use the UDT for is to be able to set up some defined values out there, uh, basically, so I have a selection criteria. And when I hit that, that's where it's going to come up there. So um, basically, for the uh, customizer um, of the screens, that's usually what you do. You just use it to move around the fields, uh, hide the fields if you're not going to use them out there add additional fields if you want to do it. Um, if you have a lot of UDFs that you create out there, you're going to add them to a different tab. So you can just add them onto this tab. Like I said, I had the client with you know 200 inventory fields. Add all the 200 inventory fields out there. Not 200 of them, but we added two different tabs and put most of the fields on those two different tabs that they use out there so that they can use it as a reference. Um, but like I said, you can put these anywhere you want to. So if we go out here now, go back here, I'm going to kind of go over what a user-defined field is. User-defined field is just a field that you're creating out there that you're going to use to pull information from a specific place to a different place. And you want to see through, have it flow through the system, or you just want to see it on the one place. So uh, the example, again, you're not with those inventory items, they don't want to see it flow through the whole system. They just want the item so that their people can be able to see, hey, I have this information. Now, in the case of this client, they use this as a, as a, a proof sheet. They, we customize a report so that they can select the item, print off this funny proof sheet that goes with um, the item itself. So it gives all the criteria and all the information on it. So that's what we use the UDFs on. Um, just like the customizer screen where you had all the screens, this one basically goes through and gives you a, a, a list of all the different tables that are out there. One of the things that you can do in here is if you're, if you're kind of savvy within the application and know hey, I'm trying to do an aged invoice report, but I want to add this information from the customer that's not on there. I want to be able to see it. Or I want to be able to add this UDF out there to the report. What you do is you find out the report, you find out what the work table is that creates that report. Then I can set up a link to it. Um, so we'll just call this one Z, and we usually use the same name throughout. So what we're doing is we're creating a UDF out here. But in creating this UDF, we're pulling it from a place that we able to be able to pull that information across. Um, and in this case, we're going to pull it from our customer. And you know, we want to be able to see this UDF. And when you click OK, what it's going to do is it's going to accept all the defaults and everything. And it's not going to allow you to change everything because it's already going to pull that information across. And it's basically going to say, hey, when I run this age invoice report, I'm going to pull this additional data from here and add it to this, this work file that create, that's used to create the report. So you can get some information across that you want to see but it's not normally out there in the system. So you can pull it across. You can also give it the... Uh, in this case, I've already predefined it, but if I were to click on all columns out there, it would give me everything. 
So if there was something else out there that I wanted to see, like maybe the credit limit come across, which already comes across on the report or something like that, you have the ability to do that. Again, this is something that you have to be familiar with the system and understand how it comes across. A lot of times people ask for customizations. This is where we'll come in on, the, on these type of reports, these canned reports, and pull in information from the different tables that we have access to within this report to get that information out for them. They want to see a little bit more. Some people don't care. So we're just going to let that one go. Um, a base UDF, what I did out here, we'll go into here, is I went into the uh, customer master. And I'm going to edit the fields. So what this is going to do is it's going to open it up, and I've added this UDF. So if we look at this UDF, I can edit it out there. And basically what I did is I've defined it as being a size, a string. You'll be prompted for this. You can put any description you want to in there. Um, you can define the string, numeric, or date. You can define the size. You can, again, different attributes. You can build a validation table out there if you want to within entering information with that. Or we can create what we call a user-defined field. And also, we can define this as being required. So that when you add a new customer or a new item or something out there um, where you want them to enter information in there, if you check this, it's going to force them to uh, if they create a new customer or anything out there. And a data source, again, is you can pull the information from different places if you want to. Usually what happens is you, have an order, uh, you, you make a modification to the customer master or the sales order, add a, a special field out there you need. You want to be able to see it on the pick ticket. You want to be able to see it on the uh, sales order form. You want to have it moved to the invoice. You want to have to go through all these different processes out there so that information is retained at that point in time. So those are different steps out there that um, by getting the system you'll understand and then being able to link them all up. Sometimes the UDF, I've had a UDF go like through 12 different tables to be updated as it was going through the processes. And it's not only just the, how would I say, it's not only just the move it from this table to this table so I can reference it and see it, be able to see it, be able to see it wherever we're going. But also when I, when I do an update out there, a journal and register and everything, what I do is, like with the sales order, I'll enter a sales order and then it'll go to invoice. Okay, so we set that up to do that. Then when I do my um, journaling at the end of the day, I want it to be able to move into the history files so I have to go through this process, and you know, here's here's a, an example where you have SO underscore sales journal underscore UPD. That's the process where it's updating the information to um, the other tables, and where do you want to push that to? Where do you want to pull that across? So that when you go into invoice history, you'll be able to see that same field on that record, some information that you need. If you have a custom report that you need to see that information within invoice history, you can run that custom report out there those type of things. Uh, so I've added that one. We're going to add a new one. Uh, I could delete that one if we wanted to, but I don't. I want to use it. Um, so basically, I'm just going to add, and I'm going to call this one Y, because I'm lazy to type. And when I create a new one, it's just a manual entry. I can pull it from someplace else, but if I wanted to, if I needed to pull that information across from any of these other tables where information is stored out there. Um, but in our case, you know, it's just a selection. I'm just going to do manual entry again. I'm going to decide, you know, I can make it a multi-line. I can make it a drop box. I can make it a list box. I can make it a check box. And if I make it a check box, it just it defaults to one character. But um, in this case, we'll just do a multi-line, which means it's just text. So in the olden days, in the previous versions of math, people wanted to put a long description out there. Well, you got to the point where you had a comment on a like a sales order line, but I needed more information out there. So we could add a UDF that was huge, up to 20,000 characters in this case, and be able to add it in there so you had more to type for the comment out there. So you define what it is. You can set it as uppercase. You could set you know, your validation, whatever you want to do, 
set it as required. You can set it to a UDT. And then the data source, of course, since this is just in our customer master, we'll just add it out there. Um, when you're adding UDFs, everybody has to be out of the system or it won't update the table. So, and if somebody was in uh, customer master right now or looking at something like a sales order where it opened customer master, it would give you an error and say somebody has opened it. So generally when you're doing those type of things, you want to do it after hours uh, or early in the morning if you're willing to get in. So it's basically added that out there. Um, there are some other features out there um, that you could be using out there. User-defined scripts or something that you can tie to a, an event or a field or whatever you're doing to run a script um, and do things. You kind of have to have a little bit of uh, programming knowledge and un in order to understand how this is done. But basically what you can do is um, um, a good example is like with the sales order, you could set it up to say based on a customer type, um, we want to set, we want to give them an automatically a 5% discount or something like that instead of using the system pricing for all the customers and everything, um, you can circumvent that by using uh, a script, a user-defined script to do all that and then pass that information across to the sales order when you do that. Um, again, it's, 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 it's a little on the hot and heavy side with the, the programming and all that needs to be done out there, but it's a tool that Sage has given us to be able to use out there uh, if we need it. Um, I've only really had to use it once myself. I think, uh, you know, BJ has used it and a couple of the other analysts have used it out there, but it's not something that's used a whole lot because uh, usually what it tries to do, uh, a lot of the stuff um, for us to program it and put it in there is a lot better than it is for the script because um, uh, the scripting um, even though we know some of the uh, coding behind it and everything, the development team has been you know, coding and provide X and everything like that for a long while. So it's just easier for them to do that through that. So we don't really go into that a lot, but if we have to, if you're interested in it, we can cover that information. You can just let us know. So what we've done is we've added that UDF, we've added that UDT. So right now we're at the point where everything kind of looks good. One of the things that I rec always recommend is that when you're modifying the customized panels out there, you always go in and rebuild the customizer log. And basically what that does is it just um, gives, identifies all the unique panels that are out there. So in this case, um, we have this one for the all and everything. Um, but I'm going to do this real quick just so that you guys can see. Accounts receivable, customer maintenance. I'm going to go out there and do a control F9. And um, I'm just going to create this for the, I, the ISM one just so that it pops up. So I've created that customized panel. And if I go back down here to the customizer log, when I go ahead and rebuild that, see now I have, I've created a panel for myself accidentally out there, um, which is okay, but I really don't want that. You really don't want it out there. So what, what I need to do is to go back through here, click on the customizer, customize panels, customer maintenance. Oh, so. Somebody accidentally created that one, or I created that one in testing and everything. But everything I've done out there, I want to set for everybody. So I've kind of done my thing just to test. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here, and if I say delete, I can delete the panel. You can print the panel. You can copy it. Uh, you can preview it. You can you know edit again if you want to. In this case, I'm just going to delete it. When you select it, it's going to say, do you want to delete it? I say yes. Okay, so now it's not in the list. Um, so I'm going to close that. And really what the customizer log does is just updates everything, the database that it stores this information for, so that when you go back in the programs, that's all you have. Um, 
the other thing that we do out there is the update the custom panel uh, to the current level is just to run that so that if anybody has a customized panel and there's base information out there, say you get an enhancement and they add a button out there. So you've paid ISM for this enhancement to add a button. And let's just go through the list. We got Bryce, we got Jim, we got Renee out there. They have their customized panels that they're using out there. By running this tool, what it basically will do is when we deliver um, the enhancement, we modify the base panel to add that button out there. And in theory, it should it should update all their panels, the customized panels that people have created out there uh, with that new button. So you can see it reported a bit if you wanted to. Uh, customize export or import. This is when we take things, um, can take your panels down, work on it in our system with the UDFs and everything like that, and then basically um, export, you know, import them on our, on our you know, test system, play with them, then we export them, and then we can import them on your system. That way we don't have to hang in your system and do um, all that type of work. What I did here with the UDT, since I've added this out here, um, which you can add it to the menu, um, I've added this UDT so I, we can just go um, set it up for 25 characters. And you can add information in there. Um, and then you just have maintenance for it for whatever you want to or whoever you put in charge to maintain those. So if I were to go back up to my uh, accounts receivable cu customer maintenance panel again, pull up the first record. Um, then it gives me a value here, whatever I've entered in there. And I can select that. If I hit accept, if I go back to it, it's got the value in there. I go to the next one. I could select one in here. I do an accept. Uh, same thing. It's the first, that's the first record, second record. So it has its unique values to it. If, and that's where a UDT comes in handy if you want to do something like maybe um, customer, you know, set up a customer type, like if it's a web order, um, if they order from the web, if they usually do retail, if they're wholesale, or whatever else you want to define it as, something to identify, you know, in this case, the customer. Uh, that's where the UDT comes in handy, because then you can basically, instead of typing information in there, you can have a value. Um, and again, it um, at, the, at that point, um, if we go to the next one, I think I said that was mandatory. Yeah, I didn't change that. Uh, let's change the cycle. Oh, I didn't do that. Look at this one. I think it'll work on this one. Yeah. I made that mandatory so you see what happens. I cannot save that record until I put a value in there. Now, if I want to freeform it and put a value in there, I can. If I go back to it, it saved that. Let's put a six in there. It won't allow me to enter anything that's not in that UDT table. That's where a UDT really comes in handy with something that you want to do specifically out there on, on a field uh, that you're adding out there for additional information. Um, so with the customizer, to be honest with you, that's pretty much all of it. Um, on what you're going to do. You can run the reports to see what kind of fields you have or screens you have customized out there. Um, the, bi the big thing about it is trying to read what that information is because it's, it, it's very, uh, it's kind of a, how do I say, a uh, not a very detailed, uh, it's overly detailed and trying to figure out what all, all, what all it's trying to say out there. Um, it's kind of hard. Oh, I never installed Crystal on this machine. I apologize for that. I wonder if this one will work. I don't know. I don't think it will work. Okay. It's because I installed. This is my play machine, and I, I haven't installed the uh, actual Crystal out there that we need for that. So 
basically, that's it when you come into the customizer um, for customer office. Uh, we're going to go over a, one other thing I want to do out there. Come up the customer maintenance. Um, I'll pull up this record. What a lot of people aren't aware about is when we have refer to custom office, we also refer to this little button here. Um, what this gives you the ability to do is add documents out there. And by adding the documents, what you can do is have those available to as generic documents to use. Um, so like in this one, I don't think I have Word on this machine. We'll see. OK, it does. I don't know what comes into here. Um, within that, um, that's very interesting that it did that. Let's edit that template. Yeah, Word's not installed in that system. I'm not sure why it opened it up in Excel. But anyways, what it would do, it's a, it's a Word document that you can format with information and be able to have it available and be able to uh, have that document created in Word and be able to pull in default information from that uh, current customer. So like this credit limit increase, um, oh, I hit the edit data. Um, I don't think it's going to be able to move. Um, but that, that's all the information that comes across within the, the customer record that's set up out there. Um, so if you set up the templates here, they do the same thing. If you go to open them, and you can add any kind of template out there and add the fields to them you want in there, you can do this for uh, each customer if you want to send them a, a specific predefined text uh, document with information on it, pulling in necessary information from that customer, um, you know, just like you would in a form letter or something like that. So you could put you know, the company name, the contact name, the address, you know, the whole nine yards, and then let them know, uh, pull in the credit limit amount, and pull in all that information so that you have a, a, a preformed document out there. And you could also use the, uh, the ability to edit it and add a new template out there for different documents and be able to have those out there uh, to use. Um, the other thing that I always like to say when I go through all these classes that little button there is your best friend. That little uh, help button is your best friend because it's going to take you in the help. The help is very good. It will kind of can kind of step you through 90% of what you need to know out there for each one of these. Um, what you're going to do is when it pulls up, um, it's going to go through an overview. It's going to have hyperlinks in there, the whole nine yards. If you ever want to search for something else, this is good where you can do a search for it out there. Um, we'll just do a merge. And basically, of course, it, it pulls up a lot. Anything that's got a mer you know, something with a merge in it, it's going to pull it up. But that help is going to help you along the whole way to be able to give you a little more detail. Now, when you come in here and uh, you're using the help, it's going to be able, it's only going to list a few things. It's going to, not going to list everything you need to do. You can search for it out there and uh, be able to um, um, have that information available for you. Um, um, on the different uh, topics you're looking for out there. So do we have any questions about the uh, customizer out there? See, I don't see any in the chat box, um, but I can go ahead and unmute everybody to see if well, uh, we do that. I can open up for some questions. Okay. And we are all unmuted. So any uh, questions about the uh, custom office? Nice presentation. Thank you. It's a, it's a little hard based on the amount of time because really if we were sitting down with you one to one, it's a lot to go, you know, it's a little easier to go over because you're going to have hands on it and hopefully understand that when you're going through these, these uh, 
if you go back, you know, and want to play with the, the customizer for the, the screens or anything or add UDFs or anything, understand that it affects everything that's going on pretty much in the system unless you create the uh, customized screens for yourself. Uh, UDFs are done throughout the system. So if you add them to company A, they go through company B, C, D, E, any companies you have set up out there. If you add UDFs, especially if you add them to something like, oh, let's say you add it to um, invoice detail, um, a UDF you want to have out there. If you have five years worth of history out there, well, it's got to add it to every single detail record that's out there. So it, it takes a little time to, to chug through it. So it, it, it can't, you can be sitting there in the hurry up and wait mode as it's going through to update it. But that's one of the processes. When you do something like a, a UDF, you add a UDF out there, it updates all the tables for that specific table that you're entering. So, like I said, when you have information, you're going to flow through the customer to the sales order, to the invoice, to history, the whole nine yards. When you get done adding all those fields that you're going through and you're updating, you've got to hurry up and wait because it's got to update all those uh, data records and transactional records and everything that are out there. So when we go through and we say, yeah, we have to add a UD, let's add a UDF, let's do this process, and it's going to take now you know why it kind of go you go through that process of the additional time because it's really it's got to go through the tables and update all that information and, and basically it's uh, can be a little time consuming just depending on the uh, amount of data that's out there and what it affects most of you probably just be using the uh, customizer to modify the the screens that are out there and uh, some people get into a heavily some people don't uh, just depends on what you want to do. And like I said, if there's extraneous information out there you don't want to see, just go in there and create the customization and hide it. Hide that field so it doesn't show up anymore. Then you'll be able to, you know, it won't, it won't be, you know, a lot of people think a lot of this information is kludgy because we don't use it, but then you won't have it out there anymore. So they'll go through and customize those. Or like I said, I had a customer that I just did you know, a couple hundred UDFs for inventory on them because they needed that information because they had to send out the spec sheet with the, with the items as they, you know, shipped them out, um, added all those fields, and had to add a couple new tabs to put them all so they could fill them all out and, uh, you know, make sure the ones that are or that they need to have set out there are set the mandatory so that they get the information so they're not whoever it may be is not uh, basically coming back and say, oh, you didn't provide us with the right information, you know, that's not how we do business, we're not going to do business with you anymore. So there's a lot of good things to it with the uh, custom office. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, and like I said, I just want to remind you that if you are going to use the uh, customizer selection to, to do anything out there, uh, be very cautious with it because, like, you can uh, basically uh, affect everybody that's out there. Um, one thing that I generally can do is um, I generally do is I create my own <laughs> custom screens and it depends on the client. If they don't have any custom screens out there, I create my own set. And then basically what I can do is I you can go in and then copy it to all so that it's, you can release it to everybody out there. Because one of the things you don't want to see is, you know, you're doing work on it. You take a lot of stuff and you basically uh, either remove it or, you know, do it in piecemeal. So you just do it all at one time. So I do it under mine and then I copy it to um, another group so that they all can see it and everything like that. And that way you're not rolling it out in bits and pieces. Of course, you can roll it out in bits and pieces if you want to, but it's just generally I just do it that way because when I'm working with a client, it's just a little simpler to do it. And again, the, the, the second caveat is when you're doing the customizations um, is that they are real time. So if you make a change to it, 
um, when people go open up that program the next time or the first time, those changes will be out there once you've saved them. So. Okay, if there isn't any questions, I'm going to turn it back over to Bryce, and you can basically finish up. Thank you. All right, great. Well, thanks, Brian, for the uh, presentation today, and thanks again to everybody who uh, took the time out of their day to attend. Um, keep in mind, register for the uh, version 4.5 launch party if you haven't done that already. I'll be sending an email out about that shortly. So thanks again, everybody, and I'll go ahead and end the meeting now. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye. Thanks, Brian. Thank you.